Well, it's uh, 6.03 and it looks like we've got uh, 82 participants, so we'll just jump in and go ahead and get started. Uh, so welcome, everybody. Welcome to the school year. Welcome back to Bishop Balamany. It's great to see you all, albeit remotely and uh, in situations and circumstances that probably none of us foresaw, but here we are and we're making the best of it and we are excited about a really uh, meaningful school year ahead. Uh, as we begin, I'd like to uh, take a moment and start with prayer, if that's all right. So if we could just put ourselves in the presence of God and begin as we begin all things at Bishop Alamany in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this school year. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion and nurture the bonds of community. Fill us with your grace as we navigate this pandemic that has challenged us to achieve higher levels of adaptability and resilience. Help us to support one another during these times and to be mindful of those among us who have suffered loss and hardship. Guide us in the days, weeks, and months ahead so that all of our efforts will tend to the benefit of our students and the fulfillment of our mission. We thank you for the blessings you have given to our community and for the hope of a very bright future. We make this prayer as all things in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So again, welcome. It's great to have you. It's great to have such a good turnout. Um, again, we are, we are living in the new normal, at least for now. We are living in times that uh, are unprecedented, but we have been working hard and with a great faculty and staff over the summer to prepare for the coming year. And we're excited to uh, be with you this evening and talk a little bit about this. One of the uh, main points of tonight is to introduce you all to our new principal, Mr. Domingo, who I'm going to turn the meeting over to in just a moment. I just want to, before I do that, say a few words about him. We are so excited to have him in the community. He has hit the ground running. And as you might imagine, it is a disadvantageous time to change roles and assume a leadership position in a complex organization amid uh, this, this pandemic. But he has hit the ground running. He has jumped in with both feet and he is fully engaged. And uh, I think if you spoke to any of our faculty or staff, they would tell you that he has taken the time to pretty much meet all of them and have one-on-one -on -one discussions and make every effort possible to really understand the ethos of our community. So we're delighted to have him on board. You probably saw the announcement of his appointment. Uh, Mr. Domingo spent about 10 years uh, at Bishop Amat High School, which is one of our partner high schools within the Archdiocese, a, a Catholic high school of similar size to us. Uh, he was the religion department chair there. He was also the coordinator of their international baccalaureate program. He served on numerous accreditation teams for other schools and led several accredi accreditation teams for other schools. And then subsequently, he served in leadership roles as principal both of Blessed Sacrament School in Hollywood and St. Andrew's School in Pasadena. One of the major components of our principal search that we conducted a few months ago was really taking a deep dive into professional references. And that was, among other places, an area where, where Mr. Domingo really, really stood out. We talked to a number of his past colleagues, to a number of his past superiors, and we were so impressed uh, with the responses we had. He has a long list of accomplishments in Catholic schools, uh, demanding standards of excellence and high benchmarks and really helping schools and communities get to the next level. Uh, and so we're excited about all of that. We're excited about his past and we're even more excited about his future that he brings to Bishop Alamany as president. I am ecstatic that he will be my partner going forward and we look forward to many years of working together and serving this community, serving our students and making Bishop Alamany the premier Catholic prep school in Southern California. Um, so with that, uh, I'm going to let uh, Mr. Domingo introduce himself and talk a little bit about his vision for the school year. He's going to review some of our plans and protocols as we go forward, and uh, then we'll move into questions, and whatever questions you have, uh, he will uh, try to answer, and um, hopefully everybody leaves fully informed and feeling good about the school year ahead. Again, thanks for being here, and with that, I am going to turn it over to Mr. Domingo. Thanks, Dr. Hamilton. I really appreciate it. Um, again, I, I'm truly uh, thankful and uh, blessed to be part of the Bishop Alameda community. Um, in my short time, I have been thoroughly impressed with the faculty that I've met, the department chairs and discussions that we've held. Um, and then we are committed 
to ensuring that we still provide uh, a quality Catholic education for your students and for our community. Um, a little bit about myself, I, Kathleen and I have, I have two children. Um, Joseph is our oldest and he is a senior at LaSalle High School. And then we have a third grader over at St. Elizabeth um, in Altadena. Um, I've been, uh, I've seen Catholic education um, in numerous aspects, all the way from pre-K to elementary school to high school, to college, to graduate work, and even through seminary. Um, and I've seen the benefits of Catholic education, not only for individuals, but also for families and communities. And so we are thoroughly committed uh, that uh, this, uh, this endeavor that you have chosen for your children um, is, um, is that sacrifice is met all the way through. And we recognize that, that, that Catholic education is only, is only uh, done through the sacrifice of our parents and in, in, in conjunction with collaboration with us in making that happen. So thank you very much in choosing Bishop Alamany and continuing to be part of the Alamany uh, community. Um, at this time, I'd like to be able to show the agenda in terms of what's, uh, Mr. Sithi. Thank you. Um, so uh, part of my discussion then today um, will be an opportunity for you to ask me questions. Um, and this is really a forum for you to be able to help me clarify um, or um, to help you understand what, what, how, we, how we're moving forward in light of this new normal that we are experiencing. Um, so we'll be talking about um, uh, the, how we're ensuring the success then of remote distance learning, uh, the healthy and safety protocols that we're, gonna, we're establishing now um, when students do come back um, in in-person hybrid learning. I'll talk a little bit about athletics and then um, how we're moving forward with that in light of the pandemic. And then the bulk of this uh, discussion today will be your questions and see if we can, I can hopefully answer a lot of, um, inf or give you more information in terms of, or clarify more information for you uh, in terms of how we're moving forward with the school. Um, uh, Mr. Sethi, if you can move on to the next slide. <clears throat> So one of the things that we are doing and is that, as you know, we, are, we have, we have uh, published our um, schedules for both uh, remote distance learning as well as for hybrid. Uh, and so we will be starting the school um, in remote distance learning on August 12th. Um, and so that schedule is posted on, on the website and then it'll be synchronous teaching on Zoom. So to, students are expected to be in class as if it was a regular in-person class um, when they come into um, their class schedule. Um, all classes will be live streamed when we do return um, in, in person um, and they, that schedule is also posted as well. And then when we do come back um, as a hybrid in-person, uh, students will be coming back to school two days out of the week and then uh, three days will be remote, but they will be going to class five days out of the week. Um, and then when we, when the students are uh, remote, when during the hybrid, uh, when, when as we're in hybrid session, um, students will be able to um, interact in real time with their teachers and with their classrooms. Um, all our classrooms are being outfitted with, with cameras um, so that those students that are um, at home um, will be able to still experience the school um, to the best of the ability that we can provide for them. Um, for when they are in remote distance learning, you can notice that on our schedule, that the afternoons um, have been marked or designated as tutoring time. Um, for those students that are taking honors or um, advanced placement classes, um, that, uh, that time is not optional. Um, we recognize and speaking with the faculty and the department chairs, that there is a lot of material that we want to make sure our students are, are, are given and are covered. Um, and so those times are not optional and they will be part of the schedule, um, that they will be part of, that the attendance will be taken and they will be expected to be part of that, of that afternoon session with, with their class. One of the things that we've learned um, in moving towards remote distance learning is that families um, and schools have wanted more structure into their day. And so the schedules that we've published, um, we wanted to make sure that, that is, uh, we've done it right. And we've done that in consultation with the surveys of, of the family members, um, in consultation with the parent associate executive board, with our department chairs and with faculty. Um, but one thing that we've also wanted to put in place um, is that we want to make sure that our students, when they come to school uh, remotely, are dressed for school. Uh, one of the things that's really important is that um, when they come to uh, even remote distance learning, that we provide that structure for them so that they were requesting that all, to, all students um, will have their cameras on um, and that they will be wearing their Bishop Alamany polo shirts. Um, 
as part of being part of school. It gives them a sense of structure, but it also gives them a sense that this is, uh, this is school. Um, and then that they are coming in um, ready to do business, just like we are all our teachers of doing business when, and moving forward as well too. Um, for the, uh, so then that, so for mass days, uh, they will not be required to wear mass uniforms. Although we, on, 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 again, that brings me to my second, that last goal point, is that we will schedule events on Wednesday after school. And those events will be sponsored either by the ASB, by campus ministry, um, uh, by various clubs. Um, we will have mass. Um, um, we'll have different opportunities for our kids to gather um, and also try to build community the best we can in light of, uh, in light of our new normal. Um, and so when we do have mass, and mass will happen once a month, they will not be expected to wear their ties, although they can if they want. They can certainly wear their ties when they go to, when they go to class. Um, but we are requesting, and no, we are we're requiring that students wear their, their Bishop Alemany um, uh, polos or at least a Bishop Alemany uh, sweatshirt. Um, just again, as a, uh, uh, just to let you know that they, we will be having uh, our gently used uniform sale uh, Thursday and Friday, sponsored by the theater department. All proceeds will go towards the theater department. Um, you can come on campus. Uh, the um, uh, the times are, are are clearly listed on our website. So we look forward to seeing you there if you are interested in 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 in, in benefiting from the used gently used uniform sale. Uh, next slide, Mr. Sithi. Um, when students come back, um, we are optimizing, so we are ready in our classrooms right away. So um, as soon as the order is, get, is lifted that we can come back to school, um, we will be ready for, have, to greet our students back. Um, our, our teachers, our administrators, our staff, we are aching to see our students back on campus and we're aching uh, to see all of you back uh, as a community as well too. Um, but we wanna make sure that we uh, do it responsibly. Um, and when we do have the students back, we are making sure that we are following all the social distance protocols as well as the public health uh, guidelines and mandates as well. So all the classrooms um, will be optimized to hold 16 students uh, with each of the seats clearly marked um, for where students will sit. The remaining chairs or remaining desks will remain, will stay in place as natural barriers um, for, uh, for, for kids. And then they are spaced apart, six feet apart. And so we've done our measurements to make sure that they are there. Uh, the teacher zones as well as student zones will be clearly demarcated. And all our teacher desks um, will have uh, clear plastic um, barriers, similar to what you see in the front office and what you might see at department stores or the supermarket. Uh, so students can still interact with our teachers in a very responsible way. Uh, temperature checks will be conducted for everyone arriving on campus. Um, we will have two sites uh, where students will be, uh, where we will take temperature checks. Right now we have, we have uh, marked off um, al uh, alumni hall and the gym uh, in terms of people, uh, students entering and, and, and having other temperature checks. And once the temperature checks are, are done, um, we are going to give students uh, some kind of, uh, most likely a, a wristband, um, saying that they have cleared and that they're able to come on campus. If a student does spike and has a temperature that's, that has a fever, um, they will not be allowed to, uh, to enter into campus. But we are do asking our parents to be able to pre-screen um, kids before they do come on campus. It really is important to ask them if they are feeling sick, um, if they are feeling well, um, all the things that you would normally do uh, in asking for the welfare of your child. Um, but then um, when they do on campus, we will do our best. We will do temperature checks. Um, and then we will uh, make sure that those students that have cleared the temperature checks will be, also, will be able to, to go to class. Um, students uh, are required to bring their own mask and everyone on, on campus will be required to wear a mask or a facial covering. Um, hand sanitation stations um, will be prominently located throughout the campus, uh, allowing students to be able to, to use them. And then the outside eating areas are gonna be reconfigured to accommodate social distancing as well as public health guidelines as well too. So that is when we come back and we are, we are, uh, we are making sure the campus is ready so that the lift order is, is, when that lift order is given, that we will have the students come back immediately the next day. Uh, next slide, Mr. Sithi. Um, so for student expectations, and just wanted to reiterate uh, the structure that we want to put in place to make sure that our students will thrive and be successful, um, either an online um, or either through an in-person hybrid uh, learning uh, environment. Attendance will be taken um, at the beginning of each day. 
uh, an absence on an online course will, will count the same absence as if a student was absent in person. Uh, students will be marked absent if they arrive 20 minutes after class begins, and that's regular in the handbook. Hopefully then when we start in, when we start uh, remotely, um, you know, all they have to do is log in. So that 20 minutes really shouldn't, uh, we hopefully then will be able to be able to see the students right away um, in terms of being, uh, being present in, in the class. Uh, we certainly don't want to dissuade the students from coming into class, if, even if they're minute 21, minute 22, or minute 25. There is a value for them to be part of, uh, of, of, of class, uh, for, uh, for them to be able to participate in class, to be able to hear the lectures, uh, to be with their classmates. So we still encourage the students to come in. Um, but uh, in terms of um, logistics, um, three tardies will equal an absence, and 12 absence will result in a student not receiving credit uh, for the class. For the, for the class. Um, parents, we're expected then to, um, again, to contact the school um, if, if your child will not be coming, either remotely or in person. Um, but again, if you can also contact um, your student's teacher as well to let them know that they will not be, uh, not be with them um, and to make uh, accommodations or arrangements so that students, sure student will not miss uh, any homework assignments or uh, to be caught up as much as possible when they miss, when they miss their time. In addition to the regular behavioral expectations, we are expecting then, we also expect students to be able to, uh, to follow um, and, uh, um, all the public health guidelines and social distancing protocols established by the school. So they must wear masks. They must uh, abide by the six feet rule, um, and not only for their own safety, but for the safety of our faculty and staff, but also for the safety of our community um, to make sure then that um, we are um, keeping that in, in uh, first and foremost, and making sure that the safety of our students and faculty and our community is paramount. And so we're asking them for your help uh, and to make sure that when we do come back that that, 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 um, um, that happens um, both at school. Uh, next slide, Mr. Sidi. Um, one of my major questions then in, in the past couple uh, Zoom meetings is about athletics, and I just want to let you know what, what's going on um, with that. The safety of our student athletes and coaches, are, again, is our top priority. Any specific questions that you might have regarding teams or practices, please contact Mr. Erbach. Um, Dave Erbach is our athletics director, um, and his email address is uh, derbach at alamany.org. Um, the traditional format for the for this for the sports, for the fall, winter, and spring sports are still gonna keep in line, um, but, but each season will be condensed to 72 days. Some, some seasons are less than 72 days and some are more, uh, but all the, all the, all the seasons um, for all the sports will be condensed to 72 days. That includes the practice time at the very beginning all the way up until the championships and to the playoffs and everything else will be in 72 days. Uh, temperature checks and screening will be taken prior to each practice. Um, summer times and rules extend until December, which means that um, even though that we are not competing, um, we, see, we are still under CIF and the Mission League rules. Uh, and part of that is that we're still in phase one, um, which means that outdoor conditioning is the only permissible uh, activity allowed for, athletic, for, for our sports. Practices will resume with social distancing protocols on Tuesday that we return from Labor Day, um, which is on September 8th. Um, and then for any parents um, interested in learning more, um, Mr. Erbach and I will be holding a parent Zoom call on September 12th at 6 p.m. Uh, next slide. Um, this time, I'd like to open it up for questions. Um, if you have any questions or any comments that you would like to make or for me to address, happy to do that now. So, Mr. Sidi, it's all yours. Great. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Domingo. Um, so, please, if you have any questions, if you can type them in the chat, and I'll try to get to each one uh, and read them out to uh, Principal Domingo so he can address them. Oh, also, uh, this PowerPoint will be in PDF form available on the page where you found the link to this meeting. So this PowerPoint will be available for your um, access later this evening. Okay, um, so our first question, uh, will teachers teach from home or the classroom? Um, we have given the option for teachers to teach at home. Um, or and some teachers have opted to come into, into class. Um, the expectations is then that when teachers teach from home, that it is uh, a working environment, that they are 
uh, much like what we expect for our students, that they're in a quiet place, uh, to be able to be attentive to their students' needs, uh, that they will be there for the full hour that, um, uh, that, this, that the, the class is in session during Zoom, and then those optional times for uh, tutoring that they will also be available for students as well. Um, they will, and then, but some, some teachers have opted to come on campus, and so that uh, really is up to their preference. Um, Carol uh, from our parents, our wonderful parent association, um, saying hi to everybody. And just a reminder that there is a link to the parent association survey um, in the calendar event where you actually found the link to this and where the PDF of the PowerPoint will be found later this evening. Uh, and then I just uh, thank you again. And I just wanted to uh, thank the parent association uh, for their help and especially in my welcome um, in this past 30 days and getting me acclimated um, to the Bishop Alameda community. They have been extremely helpful. Um, not only for the faculty and myself and the staff, uh, but in also helping us organize um, the uh, schedules that were given to you. We wanted to make sure that we had their input, um, but we also wanted to make sure that we've done it right um, so that we can make those accommodations and make sure that our students are safe, but also guaranteeing um, the quality education that we want to make sure, although it's in a different environment, that we will, we will ensure that that, that, that that product still comes out uh, to you and your, and your families. And again, I want to remind families again that uh, parent association meetings um, are the first Tuesday of every month and you are more than welcome to join and to be part of that. Uh, in the very beginning and our first meetings will be on Zoom again, that's our new normal. Um, but the parent association was looking for your help um, and your input. As, as, as we are as administration and faculty and staff. It's only through a collaboration um, of together that as parents and as school that we know that we can ensure the best quality for our students and the best uh, school that we can provide for our students and our communities. Our next question is, how do you get access to the athletic Zoom meeting? Again, similar to our meetings here, um, of the we will send it out through Blackboard and then you will get an email. And then we will also post it on our website as well too, um, in terms of the login information. Uh, great, thank you very much. Um, sorry, I just uh, changed things one second here. Yeah. Um, will the teachers uh, be in the classroom? I think um, it's similar to our previous question. Sure. So some teachers, um, when we are remote distance, uh, some teachers will opt to be, uh, have opted to teach from home, um, but a number of teachers have opted to teach inside their classrooms um, as well. And then I just wanna reiterate then that um, regardless of where our teachers are, uh, the expectation is that the teacher will be um, on that Zoom call for that full, uh, full, that full session, uh, whether um, um, during, during that time. Um, pedagogy and then how they transmit that information might, will certainly be different from all the other teachers. Uh, some might have pre-recorded uh, videos, some might be lecturing, some might break into small groups, um, but the uh, but teachers um, will be um, part, uh, will, be, will always be part of that Zoom call uh, when, their, when, their, when their period is, is in session. Our next question is, what will happen if a student or staff tests positive? Sure. Um, there are protocols that are set in place, not only from the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, but also from part of Catholic schools. But we have those guidelines and protocols that are established from us uh, from county health. Um, and then as soon as a student is tested positive or a faculty member tests positive, we will make all the notifications and, and establish those protocol, protocols and letting, and letting those families that, are, uh, that have been affected and those students that are affected, and we'll notify them immediately. Uh, thank you. Our next question is, uh, will there be a Zoom for every class? Zoom for every, yeah, in terms of, uh, I guess, I guess uh, yes, there'll be a Zoom for every class. Um, every teacher will be teaching remotely um, when we when we start school, so there will be a Zoom for every, for every class, and the teachers will be uh, on that Zoom call or on that Zoom conference call for the full period of uh, when, when they are teaching. Uh, the next question is, will the hybrid instruction be all year long? It depends on, it really depends on county health and it depends on um, uh, the directives that we're getting from, from the state as well. Um, it is our wish that we come back full, um, that, there, that uh, you know, we, are, we pray to God that uh, we weather this pandemic and then we, we come back to that normal that we have so much accustomed to. Um, right now we are keeping to those two models depending on what county health dictates, um, but it is 
back completely together. Um, all our students are on campus and, and, and doing the normal things uh, that we expect our high school students to be doing. Our next question says, my son was being bused from Palmdale. Will their temperature be taken prior to boarding? <clears throat> Again, um, I'm not quite sure in terms of what we're doing in terms of uh, the busing situation. I know that we had that last year. Um, I, will, I will confer with Dr. Hamilton about that. Um, but if that, if that is the case, then yes, they, before they are boarded on the bus, they will, the temperature check will be taken. Um, anytime that we take, uh, the students will be on our campus. And if, if, if they're going to be starting on campus via that bus, then we will take the temperature check prior to it. Uh, next question, um, when will we get information about how to upload the iPads with their books? Uh, Mr. Sothi, you want to talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Uh, so our goal, um, when, uh, when school begins, the teachers will publish their Canvas courses. And what that means is that their courses will be available for student view. Um, students will then be able to open their iPads, um, open, Can open the Canvas app, um, and their courses will just be there. And let's say they're taking biology, they can click on biology, um, they can click on syllabus, and in the syllabus, uh, it will list all the books and supplies necessary with links to purchase or acquire uh, the necessary books or, or items. Um, so again, it's all going to be through Canvas. Once the teacher publishes it and their syllabus is available, all the necessary information for supplies and books will be available through the Canvas app. On August 9th, um, I, I, I forgot to, to mention this, but August 9th, you will be receiving an email with your students' uh, courses and teachers um, uh, uh, via email. Um, and that'll be sent out. And then also confirming who your students' uh, counsel will be as well, too. So during that first week of when we return back to school remotely, if you noticed or your student notices that a certain class was left out that they've signed up for, or any changes in terms of scheduling, those are the times to be able to do it. We encourage you to contact um, uh, Mrs. White, uh, the head of counseling, or the, your, your student's counselor, um, or uh, Mrs. Arnold, um, our VP, uh, and make sure that changes happens. Um, our next question is, what can be done to ensure <laughs> students are not overloaded with work as was done during our previous distance learning last semester? Sure, um, that's a great question. One of the things then that we've learned um, in social distancing is uh, actually how to conduct it. Um, you know, I'm very proud of uh, the faculty and for the staff in terms of what they did in the last couple months um, to, to switch so quickly from in-person to remote within a day after just one PD and still to provide that um, that learning environment to the best of the ability really was a Herculean effort. And I am, 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 am very proud of, of what they've done. Um, but, and, and we've also been able to talk to our department chairs and teachers and faculty, and we've also been able to talk with our, some of our parents, and our parent board. We do realize that there needs to be some kind of um, structure moving on and what that's going to look like. Um, department chairs and myself have been meeting and then we have set these protocols in place um, and to ensure then that um, as we move forward with this new normal that they that we also are moving forward with a new kind of pedagogy with a new way of teaching understanding the limitations of what we can do and also the limitations of what our students can do remotely as well. Next question, um, how will you ensure some sense of fun and community for the students? They're really missing that at this point, and I think it has impacted their mental well-being. I, I agree completely. Um, so thank you very much for, for, for mentioning that. In the schedule that you've noticed, um, in our hybrid schedule, as well as in our remote distance schedule, you'll notice that Wednesday afternoon is a, is a minimum day. Um, in those days, the minimum day, we the afternoons are going to be blocked off uh, for activities sponsored by campus ministry. We'll have mass once a month, um, activities by um, the student body associated by ASB. Um, and then we will try to do as provide as much normalcy and as much community as we can, given uh, the restrictions that we have. And we totally understand. Um, I understand the, the need for students to come back and for their mental health um, and for them to see their students e either in, in remotely. Um, we were trying to make that happen as much as possible. Um, through our 
and we are the, the the campus will be open um but then they will be practicing um the social distancing guidelines and everything else like that but um this past summer we the the football teams the baseball teams and some of our other flight teams were able to go on campus um and practice it was uh, it was great to see them and i'm sure it was for them it was a sense of normalcy that we could give them um in light of this pandemic and it did a lot of good and not only for our students but also for um, our coaches and for our teachers to see kids again and so we are very intentional in trying to make that happen as much as possible uh, the next question is hi do you offer any type of carpooling you live in pasadena um I live in Pasadena. I'd love to take you. No, I'm just <laughs> um, I, I, carpooling, we can, um, again, we'll talk to, I think the Parent Association Board might be looking for that. I'm not quite sure. I've, that's never been, been posed to me yet, um, but it does make more sense to be able to carpool. One of the challenges of carpooling is making sure then that um, they're on the same schedule. So they're either on the, the same set of kids or all on uh, Cardinal or Gold. And so that, that's one of the challenges that we might have. Um, but certainly we'll be able to look at it. Uh, Mr. Sithi, if you could make a note of that, then I will, uh, I'll, I'll follow up with that and I'll send, um, I'll be able to answer that uh, uh, tomorrow. Sure thing. Uh, our next question is, are students allowed to stay after school hours if parents are running late? So part of that again is making sure that social distancing and, and making sure then that um, they are, are safe. Um, one of the things the survey was, was asked was about uh, pickup times. Um, we understand, and, and being in education for a long time, understand that parents are sometimes late and they have uh, life happens, traffic happens. And so uh, the safety of your students is paramount, a uh, student that is on campus. Um, certainly we will, we will house them and we will make sure that they are safe until they are picked up. But we are asking for your help um, to make sure that you come and pick them up uh, as soon as then it's still understandable, but if you let us know, call the office uh, to let us know when, you, when we can inspect, uh, when, when you can come on campus, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. That the safety of your student is, 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 is foremost. So student that's on campus, we will make sure that they're safe and, until they are picked up. Next question is how will service hours be handled this year? Sure, that's, uh, service hours, um, as well as Christian service hours for students, as well as fundraising, um, will be uh will be prorated so depending on when we come back um in the in-person hybrid model is then when we will prorate the hours uh for service hours for parents uh christian service hours and also for the fundraising as well too and so as soon as that we come back um we will we will let you know how that happens but <clears throat> but it'll be prorated relative to when we when we return to school in person how much homework will be expected during distance learning? Again, that is <clears throat> part of the discussions that we were having with our faculty and staff. Um, we recognize then that this new normal, um, a lot of our teachers have switched. And so now they are understanding the parameters of what we can do and what our expectations of our students can do and what they can handle as well too. And we wanna make sure that they will be not only successful, but they will thrive um, in this remote distance learning. So part of that discussion then is my discussion with department chairs and, and part of our discussion with faculty members in terms of expectations for students to be able to thrive and understanding what this new model looks like. Um, and so I, I, again, homework is like the way that the delivery of the instruction is, is given is really discipline guided. Um, so certain disciplines would have a certain ways of delivering the instruction um, a lot better than different disciplines altogether. And that will also deal with homework as well as projects, as well as um, uh, uh, class participation and all those things to put together. <clears throat> if the county changes its stance on considering school reopening waivers, <clears throat> first state guidelines and allowances, will Alameda submit one? Yes, so right now the waivers in the state, um, it's county by county. Um, LA County um, only has waivers, they're only entertaining waivers for elementary schools. Um, and those are childhood up to fifth grade. High schools are not yet part of the mix, um, but as soon as they are, uh, then we are happy to, to submit a waiver. Um, that waiver will go through the Department of Catholic Schools and the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, but it'll be a waiver that we submit on our own. If a teacher cancels a session, will there be a teacher substitute? Yeah, substitute teachers are, this is remote distance learning is now regular, like as if uh, it, it, it is not, a, it is regular school. So um, we have asked then teachers that if they get sick in themselves, that we will have a substitute in, in that classroom and that they will have the lesson plans and be able to follow through with that 
Um, and so your students will not miss um, any instructional time um, as a result of the teacher being, uh, being sick or being absent. How are you as an admin staff ensuring quality and equity during distance learning? Um, equity in terms of parity among classes? I mean, that's a, is there any uh, follow-up question with that, Mr. Sithi? Uh, no, I don't see one, but uh, Nicole, if you'd like to add some more information, we can, get, we can circle back to this question. Yeah, we can circle back to that. If, okay, if you yeah, could answer so, that, yeah, I'd be happy to answer that question. Yeah. All right, Nicole, please just uh, type in the question with some more information and we'll circle back to it um, soon. Uh, next question is a uh, last suggestion. I also want to suggest that teachers should log off a student if he or she does not show their faces. Yeah, so part of our expectations then for our students um, is that not only will the, will the camera be on so that we know that they are engaged, um, but they're also wearing their, their, their Bishop Alamany sweatshirt as well too, the sense of participation as well. Um, and so we are making a, a really conscious effort um, to make sure that we are, um, that our, that our classrooms are, that there are no Zoom bombing um, or anything else like that. We are given, we will give PDs or professional development training for our teachers uh, in terms of Zoom. And then as, when we transition to the teams, um, we will also make sure that our students and teachers will have enough PDs so that the transition from Zoom to Teams will be as seamless and uh, as seamless as possible. Um, we have a partial question from Lori. So Lori, if you, if you haven't already, please uh, complete the question um, in the chat and we'll get back to that one. Our other question is, will Wednesday after school enrichment start before the LA County orders are lifted? Enrichment, so part of that will be those activities and that will start immediately when school, when school happens. So uh, when we come back to school um, remotely, those Wednesday activities will be calendared um, and they're calendared already. Um, and so a couple of those then are, will, will be published out to you. Um, one of the things that's really important that you might make note of um, is that we will still have club day. Um, and then we'll have um, opportunity then for our teachers to talk about the clubs that they're moderating and students will be able to join. Um, and also other activities that we might have as well too. So uh, Mrs. Fama with ASB will be sponsoring those days as well too. Um, I think Mrs. Kennedy would like to talk about um, opportunities in band and opportunities in orchestra um, and students that would want to join. Um, and then those opportunities are still gonna be available for our students and that'll begin immediately when school starts. Uh, this next question sounds like it's from a student. Why do we have to show our face during Zoom meetings? Mr. Sithi, as a teacher, you wanna talk about that one? <laughs> sure, uh, why not? Um, so I teach yearbook, I taught honors English uh, for, for a few years. And um, as an educator, um, I, you know, I've tried teaching, you know, because we experimented with different things with not having the cameras on and it's, it's a, kind of like a barren wasteland and you don't know if your, your jokes are landing or your content is landing with the students. Um, and plus you want to really ensure that, um, that they're learning and it's, it's a social experience. I know it's a bizarre one, um, but seeing everyone, I believe is a social um, experience. Um, and um, I think it just makes us as close as we can, you know, possible in these challenging times uh, to a class and, and to see each other, it, it just, it makes you feel better. Just, I, I know it's a little bit stressful. I, I, you know, I've seen students who just like to leave their phones, like pointing at the ceiling, um, but it's also hard for us to, I mean, we want to trust you, of course, uh, but it's also hard for us to know, like, are you really there? Are you really working? Um, besides the check-ins. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, to add to Mr. Sethi, and I see Ms. Chavez nodding her head vigorously <laughs> <laughs> with a thumbs up, is it's uh, our teachers are, are showing up um, ready and prepared um, to make sure that you are, will get the best experience possible. And part of that experience is, although that we are remotely distanced, that we still want to make sure that we are not socially distant. And that part of that community is being able to see each other and to be part of that community um, is a sign then of us being together. And being able to see you, um, seeing you able to see our students really is, is a big component of that. Um, and just a quick anecdote, um, like during summer, I taught a, a freshman introductory course and we spent about five minutes. Um, just, I asked, what was the best thing that happened to you over the weekend? Just kind of as a, an icebreaker warm up. And you know, the kids turned on their, you know, I had their cameras on, but that after that day, things changed, you know, the, the atmosphere changed and it, things lightened up. Um, it really made things better. Um, the cameras were on. So, you know, from personal experience, it just made, it made it more real, if that makes any sense. I know, Ms. Chavez, you want to you chime in there? I mean, if you want to give your experience as well, too, you're more than welcome to. I don't put you on the spot. <laughs> no, 
Oh, not at all. Um, yeah, I 100% I agree with Mr. Sithi. I've done it both ways. When we first transitioned from in March, it was such a quick process and all of us were still reeling, as you all know from that experience, to switch over so quickly. We've learned a lot since then, as Mr. Domingo was alluding to, and I feel that we, we kind of learned what works and what doesn't. In order to give your children the best possible experience, the best way we can give that is if we're also interacting as much as possible. When I see the kids' faces, when I'm able to read their expressions to see if they get the material, that helps me know, do I need to go further into the content? Do I need to repeat it? Do they look like they got it? Do they put their thumbs up? Do we have our, is our chat on? In other words, we kind of have to have that in order for me to know, engage where I'm, you know, getting through and where I'm not, if that makes sense to all of you. So in order to, pos to give your kids the best possible experience, we need to see them. And I know that they like to kind of put their cameras on the, on the ceiling. I taught summer school too, or they I only see part of their ear. Um, it's, that's not going to work. <laughs> so if you could, as parents, really encourage your children to, you know, face the teacher and interact, I think that not only will we be able to give them a better experience, it'll be easier for us to know if we're really delivering the content we need to in the best possible way. So I hope that answers the question. No, that, that answers it completely. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. I do understand the irony um, of me not having my camera on. I'm a real person. <laughs> for, for, for those like three seconds. I wasn't going to say anything, Mr. Cynthia, but okay. <laughs> um, all right. So our next question comes from uh, Gwen Gurdy. I, please tell Felicity, I said hi. I hope you're doing well um, as well. Uh, she asks, once the go-ahead has been issued to resume in-person classes, how much notice will be given before students need to attend? Um, so that notice will come from county, and then um, we will do it immediately as soon as possible. Um, so um, again, Dr. Hamilton uh, was very good about clarifying that at my last meeting. Um, as soon as the 14 days, um, the state order as the, the county has lifted that, we can come back to school right away. We are preparing the, the fact of preparing the facilities so that we can come back to school immediately when that order is lifted. Our next question is, will, um, will the classes be interactive or only lecture? Um, it'll be interactive. And so students, again, during the remote learning, um, have an ability to be able to interact with their teachers right now, like you have an ability to interact with me. Um, when we come back in in-person hybrid, um, again, there are cameras that will be posted, that will be inside classrooms. Um, and then students will be able to see a live stream. And then they can interact with their teachers as well as with their uh, classmates in real time. Next question, uh, who did the students reach out to if technical difficulties occurred during Zoom class sessions? Will they be considered tardy or absent? Mr. Sidney, you want to, talk, want to talk about that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so Alamany has a new help desk. Um, if you go, I can actually show everybody um, how to access this um, with the fancy share screen option here. Uh, so from the school website under iPad program, um, there's a help desk option. And it does say to sign in. We're going to be changing the phrasing for this because I know it's a little bit confusing. Um, you can put any email address here and uh, they'll use that email address to contact you uh, to provide assistance. But again, it's just from the Alamany website, hover over the iPad program and go to help desk um, and submit a ticket. So that's the best way to get in touch um, with our tech support. Um, but I really think um, explaining things to the teacher, um, if they're later composing the email later, just explaining what happened um, is probably the best way to go. And our teachers will be understanding um, you know, as much as possible. As, uh, we know there's only a certain amount of bandwidth. If multiple people are using the connection wherever you live, you know, technology is not perfect. I'm surprised nothing has like deleted while I was talking, you know, in the last two uh, town halls. Um, I just jinxed it. Uh, but we all know technology is not perfect. We're all relying on it. It's being overused. So things happen. So I think um, definitely if it's something on our side, help desk ticket. If something happened on your end, um, just attend class and write an email or contact the teacher explaining things and then go from there. That's what I would suggest. Yeah, so I think that's the best policy in terms of communication all the way across the board. Uh, and make sure that your student and yourself are in, in constant communication with the teacher, I think, in, in, in any respect. That would be very helpful, especially if you have problems with technology. But in, in terms of academics, in terms of materials, or if they just need more help, uh, our teachers are here to help uh, and make sure that your students succeed. Our uh, next question is, where can the archdiocese, archdiocese protocols be found? The protocols uh, for if anyone tests positive. Sure. So that is an, uh, uh, that is under the Archdiocese website under um, open, uh, uh, Opening Schools Strong. 
Um, and if you look under the help desk or in the, the guide in terms of that, um, you can certainly look for it. Um, Mr. Sithi, if you could uh, remind me, then I will post that, um, that link on our website. Um, and that's easy. Rather than doing that, um, we'll have it posted for you to be able to look at for, it for uh, tomorrow. Sure, sounds good. Um, the, this is the other half of Lori's question it has to do um, what can be done about the major, uh, they experienced major delays with teachers correcting and submitting grades. What can be done to avoid this, this upcoming semester? Sure. So one of uh, my conversations then with the department chairs is ensuring parity uh, among, among classes. Um, and one of the things that we did talk about was making sure then that um, grades are updated on a weekly basis. I, I think it's, it's only fair. Um, that, uh, and some teachers will do it more often than weekly, but I think the expectation of doing it weekly. Um, I think it's only fair for both you um, as a parent and also for the student to know where, this, where, where they are in grades, and then it's not fair to them or to you um, right before a midterm or a final that all of a sudden these grades um, appear and then the grade changes, and then you really have no recourse in making that happen. Um, the department chairs and myself, um, um, uh, counting on our teachers to make sure that, that experience does, uh, ha happens as smoothly as possible. So the expectation is that they will upgrade their, up, update their grades at least weekly. The next question is, um, will there be a tuition reduction for the loss of in-person amenities? Sure. Um, the Archdiocese, um, as well as the Department of Catholic Schools, um, have uh, stated that there is no, no reduction in terms of tuition uh, uh, for, for our schools. And many of our schools in the area um, have not reduced their, um, uh, their tuition as well too. And so that would be um, all the schools that you might think of, some from Paraclete uh, to St. Francis, uh, to Notre Dame, Chaminade, um, Crespi, um, and St. Genevieve's have not, those are schools around our area. It is our belief and it is our, <clears throat> it is our commitment to you that the education that we will provide for your students, although it's a different environment, Will not will not be diminished, and we provide the best the best quality of education we can given our parameters that we're given right now. Um, and so, one of the things that we're doing is ex expanding the bandwidth in our in our classrooms in terms of our uh, to make sure that that uh, that uh, information is flowed out uh, as, as seamlessly as possible. Um, we are putting in uh, uh, cameras inside our classrooms so when we do come back. Um, and making sure then that uh, that quality is 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 uh, is is given throughout, whether it's going to be remote or whether it's in person, that the environment, although the environment changes, uh, the learning expectations from both myself for the teachers as well as for the teachers for the students will not change. And also then the opportunity then for us, um, I guess uh, one of the things that's also you know in terms of the tuition. You know, there are a lot of things that, um, that we have been able to do for families that I know that are struggling um, in terms of finances because of what's happened um, and what's happening now. Um, and then those families have reached out to us and then we are, you know, we want to make sure those families are, have been or with Alamany to stay with Alamany. And if there's, if there are wish for having their students graduate from us and to be with us as a community and your family to be with us, then, then Dr. Hamilton and myself are committed to making sure that that happens. And so any families that are um, experiencing this or need some kind of assistance, I feel I, I am, I am um, asking for you to reach out to me uh, directly um, and or Dr. Hamilton, but reach out to me um, and then um, let me know what we can do to help. Um, it, it is our, uh, our commitment to you and our, our, our students and to our families that want to make sure we, are, we kept as whole as possible and that we are able to provide this uh, for our communities and a Catholic education that if you want that for your child, then Dr. Hamilton and myself are committed to making that happen. Uh, this is a friendly reminder that there's nine minutes left, uh, you know, till the seven o'clock end of the town hall. And we have a few more, quite a few more questions. So we'll do our best. Um, it's like dating now. <laughs> <laughs> what if we decided to just do remote learning for the rest of the school year? Would that be possible? That certainly is possible. So one of the things that we have, have done is to make sure that families that need that accommodations in order to make it so that they're, you know, we, we understand that there are different kind of situations and experiences that families are living with and different kind of pressures. Um, if you choose for your child to stay at home, uh, when we, when we in-person hybrid schedule kicks in, uh, that is not a problem at all. And that's why we have those cameras in place to be able to live stream uh, for them to be able to interact um, with their teachers and with their classmates as best as possible. 
Our next question is, will Zoom classes for each class be every day and how long will each Zoom class be? For example, math, Monday through Friday, eight to nine. So Zoom class is, is a class will be eight to nine. How, what happens in that delivery of the instruction really is dependent upon the teacher. And that's the craft and, and the fun of, of teaching, whether it's gonna be remotely or whether that's gonna be in person. Um, so they might do different things in terms of classes, but the teacher expectation uh, for us is that the teacher will be there for the full hour. Uh, recently, we've had power outages due to the heat. How will the school address those types of issues? Um, in terms of us, uh, if we if we have a shutdown, I, I, then we will uh, we'll, we'll let you know. But in terms of it's a family issue, in terms of a, a residence, um, please let us know if that's going to be effective, and then just reach out to your to your teachers and communicate with them as soon as possible so that we can make accommodations as much as best as we can. Another question about carpooling: How do they arrange for carpooling? Um, again, I'm, I'm that, that's a new question for me. I'm, I'm going to find out tomorrow morning. Um, and then any questions like that, I'll be happy to post on the website. Uh, will we need to sign a waiver or hold harmless agreement as students return on campus for COVID issues? Uh, and so right now what we're doing is that we're asking teachers and families to pre-screen. Um, there, we're in the process of talking with the archdiocese and whether a form is required. But um, all, all, all students and faculty and staff, anyone coming on board on, on campus will have a temperature check. They'll be recorded as well and screened. Um, and then if you um, have a high temperature uh, or are feeling sick, uh, then, then you will not be allowed to go on campus. Uh, how will students' lunch breaks be handled? Uh, lunch will be, it's, it's, again, we're gonna do social distancing. We, are, um, we have made reconfigurations in our eating lunch areas already. Um, so benches are gonna be spread apart. They will be marked um, three reach students per picnic table. Um, and then they will be marked with six feet the distance apart in terms of that. Um, in terms of the configuration for the, for the cafeteria, um, that'll be also be different to accommodate uh, the uh, social distancing guidelines uh, as well. And so those are already in place as making sure our classrooms are ready, making sure our facility is ready, our campus is ready for when we do come back on campus. Uh, next question is, uh, what are your thoughts on having some students cluster for Zooms, maybe two to four students together? Some students are close and see each other and it may be done safely and help with isolation. Sure, so part of that is the ability then to have breakout rooms and I think teachers have been utilizing that already um, and how they utilize that really is, is dependent upon um, their delivery method and what they feel most comfortable with. Um, but I do agree that small groups are, are, are viable, are, are important. Um, and then that really, I, I leave that, to, I entrust that to the teachers in making that happen. Um, I think it meant like if they live near each other, if they're friends, if they can actually, like multiple kids can be in the same, like use one computer and attend the Zoom as, as one unit. Oh, um, that would be then a social distance. I, the, the, what I can say is that, you know, as long as you can have six feet apart and you, you're doing it outside, then, then that is what, what we would recommend. Um, and then further recommendation is that they be a family unit that stays together. That, I mean, that, that's one of those things as well too. Um, but it really is a, a family issue in terms of what you feel comfortable with in terms of um, your interactions with, with other families. And that, that we're not, we're not gonna regulate that whatsoever. Uh, what will the drop off and pick up area look like once we return to campus? Will there be marked areas for each student to stand in and how will the incoming cars be handled? Sure, so the drop off points um, will be at Alumni Hall and at the gym. Um, and then we will space them out and students will be doing that social distancing. Um, they will have temperature checks um, at both areas. Um, and then once they receive a clearance and all clear, they will receive a, a, most likely a wristband uh, and they will be allowed to go to class. Um, and then when they go to class, again, they will, they will not be allowed to uh, cluster in certain areas. They will be, still be asked to be social distance, even outside. And when they get into your classrooms, um, that social distancing will be, uh, will be enforced. Um, uh, Felicia Grigs Grigsby, our vice president, did answer a question about carpool, saying it's being handled by Liz and admissions, and that she'd uh, love to hear from people. Thank you very much, uh, Felicia, for addressing that. We appreciate it. Oh, great. So then I have an answer for tomorrow's question, tomorrow and, and uh, <laughs> as well, next day as well. So I really appreciate that. <laughs> Um, how, how or when can we find out about athletic tryouts, specifically basketball? Sure. So at the Zoom call meeting that we will be having with Mr. Erbach on um, August 12th at 6 o'clock, um, feel free to ask him that question or ask him directly. Um, email him um, and ask him directly about specific teams and practices and when, that's gonna, when, that, when, that, when that will resume.
Uh, there are two more questions about uh, tuition reduction, but I believe that was answered already, uh, and these maybe were put in before you answer them. Um, will a sense of rigor be maintained for honors and AP courses? Yes. Um, and so the materials and the uh, what the students are responsible for uh, understanding and what the teachers are responsible for delivering change. Uh, we'll expect, uh, as we normally do, uh, uh, the rigor that is already um, part and parcel of being a part of an on, a part of the um, honors program or an also part of the AP program as well too. Uh, so there are quite a few questions left with three minutes remaining. Uh, just a heads up on that. I'm, I'm willing to stay a little longer and then um, okay. I'm going to stay another 10, 15 minutes longer if that's okay. um, hopefully clear all the questions out. Sounds good. Um, how will but I'm to free to leave if you want to at <laughs> seven o'clock. You're more than welcome to, to, to go. I don't want to keep you here <laughs> any more than you have to. Definitely not as awkward as like Walk, getting up from a chair in, in a quiet room and walking <laughs> away in the darkness. Um, <laughs> uh, how will labs or classes be had? Sure. So, the classes again are part of the facilities that uh, uh, making sure that, that is what we can do. Um, labs then are part and parcel and an important component of our science courses. Um, in speaking with Ms. Vinoff um, and 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 her her department, um, we are making sure that that experience still remains part of, of the class. Um, how that plays out in terms of remotely, that is, I'm leaving that to, to uh, Mrs. Vinoff. But when we come back to school and, and remotely, we have set up uh, areas inside the classrooms, inside the labs, so that they are social distancing. Um, and then that, that is also, uh, again, part of, um, I'm leaving that to Mrs. Vinoff and her department uh, to ensure that that is a, that continues as an important component of our student learning. How many students have registered compared to last year? Have you had to lay off faculty due to financial strain due to pandemic? Um, there, as most places, as most businesses and, and schools have experienced, we, do, we did have some families um, that have been uh, unable to come back because of and though, although we are, are trying our best to make sure to minimize uh, the families that are leaving, um, and especially those that are leaving from financial issues, um, we do understand that there are certain um, challenges that are beyond our control and beyond our, what we can help. Um, and so part of that conversation that we have with, with, our, with our families really is in, in trying to help them stay and, and, and make them... Um, uh, help them as much as we can. I know that that once you're committed to coming to Alamany, then it is our Dr. Hamilton and myself um, is our commitment to make sure that we as best as we can to make sure that you will continue and finish at Alamany. Um, with regarding them to teachers, um, there are, um, as you know, then that um, uh, we are based on enrollment in terms of the tuition that we receive and a lot of that enrollment um, and determines then the, the sections that we can provide and the teachers and the programming that we have. Um, we uh, experience, like most places, uh, a decrease in enrollment. Um, and, but we are working very hard uh, to minimize that in terms of the students leaving and families leaving, um, but we're also working very hard with faculty members as well too to, to minimize that um, and with them as well too. Will students be required to print things out or do physical work? So do you want to talk about that in terms of ed tech, in terms of expectations? Yeah. yeah. Um, as far as being remote learning, um, distance learning, no. Um, no one's going to be asked to print, I mean, things out and mail them in or anything. Everything should be done digitally through Canvas. Um, if you need it, like, there, there is a physical thing, you'd probably scan it and then just submit it as a PDF um, through Canvas. Um, Regarding physical work, I don't know, like if a PE class is going to require you to do like workouts or something, that, that may be a thing. Um, but in terms of like physical papers and, and that during remote learning, during distance learning, um, I, I highly doubt there'd be anything of that nature. Uh, do, we don't encourage your students to mail her, their, their homework assignments. It'll be considered late. <laughs> Even if we receive it, we'll give them credit, but it'll be considered late. <laughs> Our next question is, once a vaccine becomes available, will Alamany be requiring all staff and students to take this? Also, the flu season is around the corner. How can we determine whether it's a flu, cold, and not COVID? We require the students to take a COVID testing to get clearance on returning back to school. So the RCIC is, and you know, all schools are, are facing that uh, 
facing that understanding that the flu season is coming and then as we return back to school it's just part and parcel of, of the season of the school and, and how we, we navigate that. I think as parents you can understand best in terms of your students health. We're asking then for you to partner with us to make sure that the students who come in are not sick, whether it's the flu or whether it's COVID or whatever it may be, that you keep your students at, at home um, if they aren't feeling well um, to keep them at home. And so the policy of the school is that they must have uh, not have a fever within, uh, their fever must have been within 24 hours in order for them to return back to school. Um, and we're asking for that, for that same um, precaution, um, whether it's the flu season or whether it's COVID. And we're asking for your help to make that happen. Um, next question is, am I understanding that some students will be on a cardinal day and others on gold? When will parents know what, what day their student is on? Will efforts be made to put siblings in on same days? Yes, yeah, so part of that will be with um, Mrs. Arnold and I are working on that. Um, we already have the students or they have had the students already on, on Cardinal Gold Days. Um, and so when you receive your students' um, class schedule for the coming year on, on this Sunday uh, via email, um, you will know whether you will be on Cardinal or Gold schedule and when we do come back in person hybrid. Um, we have made every effort uh, to make sure that siblings um, will be on the same um, same schedule. The next question, uh, probably for me, why are the remote learning classes not being started with Microsoft Teams? Why do we have to transition? Um, so I guess I'll answer it. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. Uh, okay, great. Um, I think two main reasons are quality and consistency. Um, when we changed to distance learning back in, in March, you know, it was a very abrupt thing with, with Zoom. Um, we did professional development on Zoom and we want to make sure that the year starts off strong. Uh, we want to make sure that the teachers have adequate, um, more than adequate training and professional development for teams to be able to utilize it to the best of its ability. We want the consistency that all teachers and classes are using the same product. Um, and we want to start the year off strong, you know, really. So we really want to ensure the quality and consistency uh, with our education, making sure the meaning, uh, the content is meaningful. Um, and we want to, uh, we know we can do that with Zoom. And we know we can do it with teams uh, once we have the, ad the more than adequate professional development. Um, the next question is, uh, will you have more nurses, medically trained staff on campus when you go back to campus? Um, looking at uh, different opportunities for us to be able to make sure that our students and faculty are safe. Um, uh, right now, in terms of nurses and, and uh, health professionals, um, you know, we're looking then for, for parents, if, if you would like to use your service hours um, as a health professional to help us out, we are more than willing to, um, to, to use and, uh, and to help and to make sure that uh, we utilize those hours for, for the benefit of our school and for our students. So yes, yeah, certainly if, if you have, if any of those health professional parents are out there and they want to just volunteer their time, we'd be happy to, 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 to have them on campus. Uh, this is the um, circling back to, and I, I sincerely hope I'm pronouncing your name properly, uh, Nicole Kent. Uh, here's some clarification during distance learning last semester. As an educator, I felt the assignments were watered down and not following the academic standards. Also, from an equitable standpoint, there was little to no grace for internet issues or home life concerns. So as an admin staff, what is your checks and balances to make sure quality education is happening? Sure, so that's a very good question, so I appreciate that. You know, in, in speaking with the department chairs um, and talking about the experience that our teachers and faculty went through, especially that remote, when they pivot, had to pivot so quickly, um, we recognize that there are some hiccups, as, as, as Mrs. Lee talked about, um, and then we're trying to address that. So given the parameters of what social distancing is like, um, given the parameters of our expectations of what our students can learn, given this new normal, um, the teachers and, and department chairs have spoken about that and, and will adjust uh, to make sure that our students not only are successful, but will also thrive in this new kind of learning environment. And part of that is the PDs and part of that is the experience that we are all going through and understanding what is the best practices for our students and for our community. Um, we do recognize that, um, especially um, when uh, the pandemic hit and most families had to stay home, um, that you know resources might have been limited they might have shared the same uh, computer. They might have had uh, bandwidth uh, problems and difficulties. Um, and hopefully as we're moving forward and as this is the new normal that families have adjusted um, and then we have adjusted as well in, in making sure that that um, doesn't happen. Um, but we are certainly aware then that um, there might be resources that are being shared uh, among siblings or among family members. Um, and then we will do our best 
um, to make sure that there's a sense of parity. Uh, but one thing that we would, would help uh, on our part uh, is that for you to communicate those needs to us directly. Communicate with your teachers in terms of that home environment. Communicate with your teachers in terms of what is best um, and how you can how you can best support your how we can best support your students, uh, how we can best support your family in light of this uh, new normal. Uh, and then through that communication and the more communication that you have um, with them, we are very receptive in making sure that this product is delivered to the best uh, of our abilities and making sure that our students will successfully thrive in this new kind of normal. Next question, will all teachers be posting classwork projects? Um, by the way, I'm sorry, I have a puppy. Uh, it's really hard. She's like a little puppy <laughs> so in the background. Um, will all teachers be posting classwork projects the same way? For example, under assignments on Canvas, previously teachers posted in many different ways and it was confusing trying to make sure all assignments were being completed. Is it okay if I answer this one? Yeah, actually, sure, go ahead. All right. Yes, uh, there will be consistency, <laughs> um, a million times so, and it's something that is it's one of our major goals uh, this year. In fact, I will be um, conducting a professional development session on that with my team to instruct the teachers and uh, provide best practices um, for that. Uh, so announcements will be in the, in the right place, assignments, um, everything will be in the correct place so that when you're perusing your students' Canvas courses, it's not a scavenger hunt to try and find out where things are. Um, it'll be uh, very consistent and uh, very easy to navigate. Uh, and thank you for asking that. And I appreciate uh, Ms. Scudder's uh, hands up in the air, uh, waving that we all care. So thank you very much. <laughs> um, awesome, awesome. Uh, the next question is, last semester during, re during remote learning, my student wanted to schedule one one one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting with the teacher, but the teacher indicated they were not allowed to meet with the student one-on-one. -on -one. Is this still true? Um, again, so safety protocols are in place. And so one of the things that we have put in place is that tutoring time that's available for all students um, in the afternoon. Uh, teachers will be available for that tutoring time as well. And that's part of uh, part of the class time, um, but a one on one um, with a tutoring with a, with a teacher really uh, uh, that should be talked to amongst some uh, amongst the teachers. We want to make sure that, our, that the environment is safe uh, and everything else like that. But that communication with a teacher really is very important. Uh, last report cards had wrong GPAs. Will this be cleared up or do we need to call someone to fix this to get a new copy? Yeah, it's Mr. Sithy or Ms. Chavez. I'm just joking. It's, it's late in the evening, so I'm getting snippy. <laughs> um, no, I'm just joking. Please okay. call. Please call um, uh, the counseling office um, and then they will adjust any GPA discrepancies that, that you have in, in your grades. Um, not, a, not, not, not a problem at all. Uh, please call Mrs. White uh, or email Mrs. White or Alexis Arnold, Mrs. Arnold, uh, and then we will rectify that situation as possible. And you can CC me on that one or BCC me, whatever you want to do. So I'll be kept in the loop as well. That's uh -huh. easy enough. For PTSA leadership, it would be great if your meetings could be on Zoom as well. Um, is that Parent Teacher Association, maybe? I, would, I think that's Parent uh, Association, and they will they'll be on Zoom. Yes, yes. yes. Um, and the links will be on the school website, similar to how you found this one. Um, well, we have about five more minutes, if that's okay with everybody. Um, and then I'll just wrap, try to wrap it up with a couple more questions. Is that okay, Mr. Sithi? Yeah, that sounds good to okay. me. We have a couple more questions, or are we? We have, we have keep getting. We're at six forty. The questions are back in time, so we're at six forty nine p.m. So. Oh, not bad. <laughs> yeah, not 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 too bad. Um, do your teachers feel prepared for the year? What will the PD look like for the year to ensure that they have the trainings they need and are confident in business learning? Sure. Um, so our we will have uh, uh, the teachers will meet on uh, August tenth, and then we will have a PDs in terms of ensuring. Uh, uniformity across the board, not only in, in, in terms of faculty, but also in disciplines uh, as well. Um, then we have scheduled uh, professional developments um, on the minimum days on that Tuesday and Wednesday for our teachers to be caught up um, with Canvas, to be able to maximize Canvas to the best of our abilities um, and to use that uh, uh, to, uh, to enhance, but also to, to make sure that our teachers are successful um, and making sure our students thrive as well too. Uh, the Archdiocese um, through the Department of Catholic Schools um, has been continually offering um, uh, professional developments uh, uh, opportunities for our teachers to be able to go on as well too and so our teachers will be will make available of that and so we will happily send our teachers and some of our teachers that will be gone um, a part of that uh, part of that process uh, many private schools in LA County seem to have a different strategy and approach why is that do you meet with other school principals to do lessons learned on remote learning best practices we do. So that's a very good question. So um, the way that the Archdiocese is 
uh, organized for high schools is through regions. And so in our region, um, we have the same schools that I talked about. So in our region is the San Fernando region. So in our, um, we have St. Genevieve, we have uh, um, Notre Dame, uh, we have Chaminade, Crespi, um, Paraclete, uh, St. Francis, uh, uh, and those schools and Holy Family, anything in the San Fran region that we meet together. Uh, we've been meeting month, uh, monthly um, as presidents and principals and trying to get best practices um, uh, for, you know, for remote distance learning. Um, so in, in meeting with them, uh, we are all in the same uh, boat. Um, we are on the same challenges. Um, we are trying to do the best that we can for our communities, but every community is, is different. Um, and so uh, we have, we are taking the best practices from everybody and trying to adapt it to what's best for our community and making sure that works and, and thrives. Uh, someone's asking if we can post the Q&As from these sessions. And yes, these uh, will be available in video form on our YouTube channel uh, tomorrow. Um, let's see, you mentioned the teachers would be there for the full hour, but need to know if all classes will be every day for an hour. So the classes will be meeting based on that schedule. So um, when we are remote distance learning, so that's an hour schedule. So the classes are an hour. And then for those optional uh, tutoring times, it will not be tutoring times for, um, for AP and honors classes. Those will be mandatory. But teachers will still be, um, will be part of the half hour um, when they're scheduled for tutoring. Yeah, so if you go to the school website, you can access the schedules by hovering over student life and both of the new schedules are available uh, right there. Um, let's see here. Uh, how will afternoon pickup of students be handled once we return to campus? That was a similar question before. Yeah, similar question, so. Yeah, um, people are being very nice and thanking us for the session. I want to thank you again for being part of the session. I think we can just wrap it up. Um, Mr. Sippy, if we can do that, and you can show the last slide. Uh, looks like, actually, we have one, one question. Um, how will no, you no more questions. I'm just joking. All right. <laughs> See you guys. Um, how will you handle the religion retreats for students this year? Yeah, so religion retreats are, you know, we have a brand new campus minister, Mr. Rubidal, um, and then I am meeting with um, uh, Ms. Sackhorn, who will be doing our retreats for uh, Kairos, and then Fran Ruth um, will be doing our discipleship retreats. The one-day retreats that we have for sophomores um, will still be scheduled, but then again, we're looking at maybe pushing that back later into the spring, um, then giving us opportunity when we come back um, to be able to do that and do that remotely. And so it doesn't have the same effect. Um, and so that we are looking then so to have those retreats and that's an important component of the normalcy that we wanna provide for our students and the, and the experience that they have for high school, especially for their sophomore year, um, going into becoming upperclassmen. Um, that'll be part of my conversations that I've been going ongoing with Ms. Rubidal, um, with the campus ministry team. But we are committed in making sure that those um, retreats will still continue to happen, but will happen when we come back in a hybrid model. It looks like we have two more questions. We have a request from Felicia. What's going on here? Well, uh, we've got one from Felicia. We can't deny her a request. Uh, she's asking if I can show them how to uh, access the Parent Association page, and I'd be happy to do that. So from our school website, there's um, an icon here called My Alamany, and this um, gets to all the portals um, that have links in, or important links for each of these categories. Uh, so for parents, um, and then there's a link to the Parent Association uh, right here. So again, um, it's from the main page, My Alamany, Parents, and Parent Association. Uh, so that's how you get to that. Um, the other question is, let's see, sorry, the chat scroll, like automatically scrolls, so I'm always trying to like find where I am. Um, how will the students get the Zoom links for each class? Uh, and the answer to that is it will be published in the Canvas courses um, when school begins. So when school starts, uh, once a student installs Canvas, um, the Canvas course, when the teachers publish their courses, they'll automatically appear on the page. The student will then um, open the Canvas course and in the syllabus um, or in the announcement, find the Zoom link uh, to, the, to the Zoom uh, meeting. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's everything. Great, put on the next slide before they ask a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanna just wrap it up with the calendar of events that are coming up. The first day of school is August 12th, and that's a minimum day. Um, the schedule is posted and we'll, we'll keep with that schedule. The new family informational night will be on August 12th at 6 p.m. Again, I want to remind families that are involved in the athletic programs and athletic department uh, to make sure to be part of that Zoom call with Mr. Urbach and myself at 6 p.m. On, on August 13th. 
back to school night will be on, on August 19th, and that's going to look like a different format altogether. And then we'll, we'll, I'll share that information to you uh, the closer that happens. And then counseling night for juniors and seniors, if you have any siblings that are junior seniors, will still happen on August 25th, uh, 25th at 6.30. Again, I want to thank you and your families uh, for continuing on this journey with us in light of this uh, new normal. Um, Dr. Hamilton and myself are committed uh, to making sure that um, we can provide the best quality uh, Catholic education for you and your families. Um, we recognize that this is a sacrifice on your part and that we honor that sacrifice um, in making sure that we are good stewards of what's been given to us, not only the resources, uh, but also of your students and your children. Uh, are given to us for your care. And I want to thank you for that from the bottom of my heart, as well as Dr. Hamilton. And we recognize that this school will only exist with, with your children and with the partnership of you um, and moving together and moving it forward. Um, and so um, please know that you and your families are in our prayers uh, in light of this endemic. And then that we hope that you will stay safe and say, um, and, say um, and we will hope to see you soon in the very near future. Again, I want to thank you um, for, for sticking out with us and past the 15 minute mark. Um, again, so thank you very much. And then we hope to see you very, very soon. Thanks again. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you.